Welcome to JS for Justice podcast. If live breaking news and following true crime is your thing, then please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you like what you see in my videos, please consider giving them a thumbs up. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I feel like I'm so rough this early because I am. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Jay is for Justice. It is Monday. Some of y'all are cold. Carlin, thank you for being a member for three months. Thank you so much. She said it's a cold one today, but we about to heat up this chat. You guys always heat up the chat. You guys are hot like that. It's hot in here whenever you guys are here. You know who you are. Twenty seven and twenty five. So hot and hurt. Why does it like right before Halloween it has to get butt ass cold in the northern states or the states where it gets cold? Why does it have to get cold right before Halloween? Every time, every time. I'll tell you what it is in my town. Let's see. I haven't even looked. It's it's pleasant, but I do have the air on. If that gives you an, an, any indication, it's pleasant. So I think it's like 72 or something here, but good morning, good morning. Chili in since in the natty, in the natty. Well, welcome to today's stream. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. And I'm looking at the results of the poll that I put up, and it looks like a lot of you are unfamiliar with this case. So 71% of you at this point are unfamiliar. So what I did was I pulled up from the archives of J is for Justice. This is from about a year ago, I think. And we're going to do a recap because I went through the entire affidavit. So this is going to give us all of the information because I guess I really was intrigued with this when it happened. Well, all of you guys that are cold, bundle up and get cozy. Turn on your fireplace or light a couple logs, get some coffee, and let's get into this recap of Caitlin Marie Armstrong. Caitlin Marie Armstrong. All right, so I'm going to roll this footage. I did put up a um, Q&A if you have any questions going through or things you want to clarify, or things you want to comment on, go ahead and put them in the Q&A section. And we will go over them at the conclusion of this recap. Because tomorrow, opening statements begin. It's still up in the air if we're going to have a camera in there. Because the judge is only allowing cameras for opening, closing, and verdict. Casey says, coffee schmoffy, I'm at the dispensary. Whatever is your poison, girl, whatever is your poison, get it and get comfy. Because we're about to embark on a journey of a crazy murder case, honestly. And I'm, I'm dying to know what you guys think. So I'm going to roll this. Make sure you put your questions in the chat. Give this video a like if you haven't already. Let's get to it. The dogs ran away. I don't know why they got scared off doggy cam. They're on the floor. Um, But just if I have to get up, you guys, Leo. I'll let you know. I have someone here doing work. So if I have to get up real quick, um, that's why. Uh, Cher says, Jay, Papa Cher and I want to do our first interview together on old days with Barbie. Come up here. Oh, is it S Maple Avenue? So, but I think it's Travis. Pretty sure Megan is in there as well. Um, But here it is. I have reason to believe and do believe that Caitlin Marie Armstrong, date of birth 11-21-87, did then and there 
on or about 5-11-2022 at 17 O. is it S Maple Avenue? 1705? 1708? I can't read that. 1708 Maple Avenue, Unit B, Austin, Travis County, Texas, commit the offense of murder in the first degree. I have some images I want to share with you while we're going over this because I have pictures of that house and everything. Let me get those up. I apologize. I didn't have that ready. Kind of forgot. It'll only take me a second. I have a bunch of images. I want to... You guys can take a gander at. It's pretty interesting. What's really interesting to me is that her boyfriend was seeing this girl. Oh, we'll get to it. Okay, here's the photos. Oh, shit. All right, we'll just put these like over here and you guys can look at those. So apparently she had a nose job when she was in Costa Rica. We'll get to that as well. Heather Howard, hi. Megan is in Harris. Thank you. Oh my gosh, this lady total Robin, Miss Robin, she totally reminds me of the lady that drove in diapers. The female astronaut, she was obsessed with this dude. She put on a diaper, drove across the country, and um I don't think she killed her. Shout out I, to Miss Robin 2023. Whoop, whoop. Get some turkeys. But Miss Robin, I'm glad you're here because I was going to text you and tell you that this girl went to Stevenson High School in Michigan. Oh, I forgot about this part. She went to a Stevenson high school. Stevenson High me. School. Weird. Okay. Let's get to up, this Mike? arrest. I have a David. So this is Detective Richard Spittler, I think. It's really blurry to me, you guys. I really need to get a freaking um, monitor. I'm using this TV. I think I said this yesterday. And it's like super pixel. Like you can see all the little lines. Like I'm sitting up like right to a TV. So some of the things are blurred and I hate it. I need a nice monitor. Okay. Um, that was before. This is Richard Spittler, on, it looks like, um, employed as a commissioned peace officer with the Austin. That was before Miss Janice Burns was so kind to get me the monitor that I'm using now. So now I can read things properly. Thank you, Miss Janice Burns. Can I get more turkeys? Police Department, APD. I'm going to call it APD from here on out. And is currently assigned to the homicide unit. A fiat. Affiant, is it Affiant, has obtained the following information through personal knowledge, information provided by APD officers, victim interviews, and information contained in APD offense report number 22131523. On May 11th, 2022, at approximately 9.56 p.m., APD officer Martin Salinas responded to a check welfare urgent call at 1708 Maple Avenue in Austin. And that house will scroll on the screen as we're watching. Um, <clears throat> it is the one that's covered all by the trees. You can barely see it and there's a gate. Uh, but Officer Salinas arrived on scene and located the caller, later identified as Caitlin Cash. Now, Caitlin Cash was a friend of Anna Wilson's. So inside the residence, performing CPR on the female subject later identified as Anna Wilson and that we're going to call her Mo because she went by Mo. Officers on the scene reported Wilson had multiple defects on her body that had the appearance of gunshot wounds. Officers observed multiple fired cartridge cases on the floor near Wilson, but a firearm was not immediately observed. Wilson was pronounced deceased at 1010 by Dr. Escott. Cash stated the descendant, the descendant was her friend. Decedent was her friend. <laughs> Wait. Roberta. Who was a professional cyclist and visiting from San Francisco. 
Cash advised she picked up Wilson from the airport on May 10th, and Wilson had come to Austin for a bicycle race the coming weekend in Heiko, Texas. Heiko. Heiko. On May 11th, Cash stated she had received a text from Wilson, stating Wilson was going to meet up with a friend named Colin. Now, Colin Strickland is, or was, I guess, Caitlin Armstrong's boyfriend of like three years. Um, so Mo and Colin were going out together. Cash advised she left her residence around 530 to meet with some of her friends and have dinner. As she left, she observed Wilson's large bicycle travel bag sitting next to the front door on the elevated porch. Cash advised she went back inside and told Wilson to take the bag inside before she leaves so no one steals it. Cash advised after eating with her friends, she returned to the residence and observed the large bicycle bag at the bottom of the stairs, partially blocking the carport. Cash advised she walked inside her residence and wait, she went inside of her residence approximately two minutes before she called 911. And notice the front door to the residence was unlocked. Cash stated, Wilson was observed lying on the bathroom floor covered in blood and no one else was inside. So Mo Wilson went out with Caitlin Strick or Caitlin Armstrong's boyfriend, Colin, and then came back and was found shot to death on the bathroom floor. So Colin was the last one to be with her. Just so we're clear. Um, so Cash advised, okay, da 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 da. So she saw her on the bathroom floor covered in blood. No one else was there. Cash advised that Wilson's specialized S Works bicycle appeared to be stolen, but nothing else inside was missing. Officers checked the area and they located Wilson's bicycle about 68 feet south of Cash's residence, concealed in thick bamboo. Cash identified Colin Strickland as the subject who Wilson was going to swim with. Cash further advised Strickland lives in the Austin area and is a professional cyclist sponsored by Red Bull. So uh, Colin Strickland, professional cyclist sponsored by Red Bull, um, had a lot to lose in this situation with sponsorships and, you know, this weird shit. Allison BD, thank you so much for your super chat. So appreciated. Thank you. Oh, with the Coke Zero. Okay. <laughs> the subject was fully identified as Colin Strickland, a white male born November 17th, 1986. Strickland's issued Texas driver's license showed an address in Austin. Cash spoke with Detective Spittler and, ex- and explained she has an electric lock on the door to her residence that is unlocked by using a unique code. Cash stated... When the unique code is used, she receives a notification on her phone advising it has been unlocked. So she explained that the code was unique to Wilson for only her to use, Mo. Mo had a unique code. She showed the notifications on her phone that showed um, Mo coming in at 555. It was unlocked when she left to go swimming. And then she came back at 836 p.m. So when she left, it was 555. She came back at 836. And she says that that code was unknown to others. Detective Rolando Ramirez observed a surveillance camera mounted on the exterior of a residence near the crime scene. The residence is directly north of Cash's residence and the camera faces a driveway next to Cash's residence. Detective Ramirez spoke with the homeowners and they allowed him to review the surveillance video. In the video, Detective Ramirez observed a dark-colored SUV drive past the residence with the surveillance cameras at 8.37 p.m. So we see here the door unlocked at 8.36 p.m. And then this car drove by at 8.37, one minute after. The dark-colored SUV slowed down, appearing to come to a stop directly next to Cash's residence The SUV appeared to have a large bicycle rack mounted on the trailer hitch, a luggage rack mounted on the roof, and what appeared to be chrome around the windows. No other vehicles were observed on surveillance passing by 
until the marked emergency vehicles arrived. On May 12th, officers assigned to the Lone Star Fugitive Task Force drove to the address listed on Strickland's license. And there they observed a 2012 Jeep Cherokee bearing Texas license plate LDZ 3608 with a large bicycle rack mounted on the trailer hitch, a luggage rack on the roof, and Cromer on the windows. Detective Spittler and Detective Ayers responded to Strickland's listed address and spoke with Strickland. So this is Colin. Upon arrival, Detective Spittler observed the three vehicles, a 2002 BMW, a 1998 Mercedes, and a 2012 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Strickland voluntarily agreed, voluntarily agreed to drive to the Austin Police Headquarters for a formal interview. Before the interview began, Detective Spittler told Strickland he was free to leave at any time. Strickland advised he currently lives with his girlfriend, Caitlin Armstrong, a white female born November 21st, 1987. Strickland stated they have been dating for approximately three years, but briefly ended their relationship for one to two weeks in October of 2021. During Armstrong and Strickland's breakup, he met the victim, Wilson, which is Mo. Mo and Colin had a rom- romantic relationship before Strickland ultimately began dating Armstrong again. Strickland advised while he and Mo Wilson were dating, Armstrong called Wilson on the phone, telling Wilson she was the one who was dating Strickland. So this all, let's just break it down and call it what it is. This is Colin Strickland, unable, look at that picture of her, guys. Oh, my God. If you're looking at that slideshow, check out that picture of her in court. It is scary. Scary. But this all boils down to Colin Strickland not being able to keep it in his pants, cheating on his girlfriend, and she goes ballistic. But guess who bought her the gun? Colin. Colin. And Colin's not charged with anything. He's not charged with anything. And he left the state right after Mo was murdered. He ran and he said it was because he was scared of Miss Caitlin. Strickland told Detective Spittler he has had to change Wilson's name in his phone so Armstrong doesn't know who he's speaking to as they continue the relationship. So this creep was cheating on her and I'm not defending her actions but he was cheating on her changing her name Mo's name and his phone And this Mo probably may have not had any idea. Shame on this dude. Shame on him. Uh, Let's see. Strickland admitted he had to change because, okay. Strickland also advised he has had to delete text messages on his phone to prevent Armstrong from finding them. Strickland advised he picked up Wilson on his motorcycle on the day of the murder, May 11th, 2022. At approximately 5.45. So that matches up with the unlock of the door. Um, He picked her up from Cash's residence on his motorcycle. And they went to the city of Austin, a deep eddy pool. Located at 401 Deep Eddy Avenue in Austin, Texas. Strickland stated after swimming, he and Wilson walked to Pool Burger. Now, mind you, all these locations are right there in walking distance. Really close to this Caitlin Cash's house. Um, Strickland advised that after they ate, he drove her back to Cash's residence on his motorcycle and dropped her off. Strickland advised as he arrived, he did not observe anyone nearby and noted the garage door to the garage located underneath Cash's residence was closed. Strickland advised he did not go inside the residence and left promptly after dropping off Wilson. Strickland advised he drove his motorcycle northbound through an alleyway until East Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Strickland advised he stopped his motorcycle and sent a text to Caitlin Armstrong at 836. So as this girl is allegedly driving by the residence, he's texting her. She knew, obviously, if she was stalking them, that he had just dropped this chick off. So he texts Caitlin and he says, hey, are you out? 
I went to drop some flowers for Allison at her son's house up north and my phone died. Heading home, unless you have another food suggestion. Strickland had lied about his whereabouts to Armstrong to hide he was with Wilson throughout the evening. Strickland advised he rode his motorcycle home and arrived at 8.43 p.m. He then sent another text to Armstrong around this time and recalled being nearby his residence when he sent it. He went into the garage and began working on his bicycles to prepare prepare for an upcoming race. While in the garage, he texted Armstrong again at 921. Strickland advised not long after he sent that message, Armstrong arrived to the residence driving a 2012 Jeep Grand Cherokee with the large bicycle rack on the trailer hitch, a large rack mounted on the roof, and chrome around the windows. Strickland advised Armstrong was the only occupant inside the vehicle. Throughout the interview, Strickland spoke very highly of Mo Wilson and her accomplishments. Strickland advised Wilson was a professional cyclist and was assisting her with obtaining new sponsors. Strickland referred to Wilson as the best female cyclist in the United States and possibly the world. When Strickland described Armstrong, he referred to her as a participant at bicycle races while he is a racer. Strickland stated he told Armstrong in the past, she does not need to ride with him because she holds him back. Strickland advised Armstrong normally feels as though he's grumpy while training because he has to wait on Armstrong Due to her not being able to ride at a professional level. Ooh, he's this guy asshole. sounds like a dick. <laughs> All right. I'm coming to chat to see what you guys think so far. Anissa. Hi. Anissa. I haven't seen her in forever. What are you guys? All right. Let's fast forward through this. Get back to the document. Only Armstrong drives it. Strickland admitted to purchasing two firearms. Now, this is where it gets fucked up. <laughs> Okay, they broke up, remember, late last year. They break up and he buys her? Strickland, what was the date? Let's go back for a second, because I need to see what date he said they broke up. Do you guys remember? Okay, they in October 2021. They ended their relationship for about two weeks, he says. Now, Colin Strickland admitted to purchasing two firearms. Two. Approximately between December 2021 and January 2022. What? One for himself and one for Armstrong. Strickland advised he purchased a Springfield Armory handgun for himself and a Sig Sauer, Sawyer, Sauer, Sewer, whatever, handgun for Armstrong. Roberta. Strickland told Detective Spitler Armstrong does not know where Wilson was staying and has never been to Cash's residence before. Strickland advised he was unaware Armstrong knew anyone in the area. The murder occurred. So how did she know where Mo was staying? And why did he buy her a gun? It gets weirder. While Detective Spittler was conducting the interview with Colin, Detective Ayers, along with members of the APT TAC Intel unit, executed a residential search warrant, which was issued by the Austin Travis County Municipal Court. During the search, officers located two firearms in the residence, as described by Strickland. Okay, sorry. This is me right here. I'm not on camera, but I'm just here like chiming in. But mainly this is me reading um, this affidavit live. So I am talking to chat in the live too. So I just want to let you know. And I wanted to give a very special thank you to Carlin. Thank you for your super chat. Very greatly appreciated. And so glad to have you here. So the Sig Sauer, whatever, and the Springfield Arms 9 millimeter. It was discovered by officers of the Lone Star Fugitive Task Force that Armstrong had an outstanding Class B warrant for arrest. The Lone Star Fugitive Task Force located and apprehended Armstrong. And she was transported to the Austin Police Department Homicide Unit Office, where Detective Katie Connor interviewed her. During her interview, it was relayed to Detective Connor 
that the Class B warrant was not valid and she would be free to leave. <laughs> what? <laughs> Weird. Detective Connor advised Armstrong of the change and further advised her that she was free to leave and the door was open. Armstrong was asked, but then they continued to question her. That is dirty shit right there. I, okay, this is me live, live. So they had her birthday wrong or something in the records were wrong and they let her go. But like, do you think they wanted to see if she'd take off? I mean, what is this all about? It's so weird. Armstrong was asked if she had heard what happened in the past 24 hours and Armstrong began to nod her head and stated Strickland walked in the house and said one of the women in the cycling community had passed away. Armstrong was very still and did not move at all as they spoke. When confronted on how Strickland was, quote, talking to this girl and Armstrong's name came up during the investigation, she continued to stay quiet and completely still. When Armstrong was confronted with video evidence of her vehicle, she had no explanation as to why it was in the area and did not make any denials surrounding the statements presented to her. Detective Connor then confronted her on how Strickland went out with Wilson and that Armstrong was upset about that. Armstrong then turned her head and rolled her eyes in an angry manner. Still, they brought her in on a phony warrant and they're sitting there asking her these questions. <sighs> Armstrong then stated, I, I'm certain as to even what you mean or what he said because I didn't have any idea that he saw or even went out with this girl as of recently. When confronted about our, how Armstrong's vehicle was seen next to Cassius' residence and how Strickland was saying certain things, Detective Connor explained that she wanted her help to explain what actually happened and to help provide a logical explanation about why her vehicle was in the area. Detective Connor then stated, quote, maybe you were upset and just in the area. Armstrong then began to nod in agreement. Detective Connor then confronted Armstrong on how seeing her vehicle in the area, coupled with the statements made by Strickland, made things not look too good. Armstrong then nodded her head up and down as if in agreement. Armstrong again made no effort to deny what was being said and still provided no explanation. She didn't have to as to why her vehicle would be there. She didn't have to say shit. Armstrong continued to remain very still and guarded as she spoke with Detective Connor. Armstrong then requested to leave, so the interview was ended. And I don't think that that should be held against her at all. I mean, what is this crap? <laughs> okay, let's stop right there. What is this crap? What do you guys think? Do you guys think that... Let's do a quick poll. Let's get your opinions on this one. Do you think that that was dirty or no? I'm going to get a poll up here. Let's keep listening. Oh, hey. Um... This, we have a warrant for you, for your arrest. Oh, never mind. <laughs> that warrant isn't valid. <laughs> but let us grill you. Because they, what, couldn't bring her in on anything else? They don't have anything. The fucking, do the fucking gun is at their house. Right, so, okay, wait, let's unpack that for a second. They found two guns. This Mariah Mo Wilson was shot. They found two guns at the Strickland residence where Caitlin Armstrong and Colin Strickland lived. So they're saying that the bullets or the casings match one of those guns, but the gun is at the house. So how, how did she do it? With that gun. This is why I wanted to, to have cameras in the courtroom. And the judge is only allowing them opening, closing, and the verdict. So we're going to have to watch this closely. I'll be doing updates. I'm following a news person that's in the courtroom. So I'll keep you guys definitely updated. They have her, a black Jeep Grand Cherokee driving by this chick's house.
That's it. That's all they have. How do we know Colin Strickland wasn't really in that SUV? Yeah, they told her she could leave, and then they proceeded to ask her, hey, have you heard about what happened in the last 24 hours? They baited her. They baited her. Shady shit. On May 13th, Detective Spittler contacted Wilson's friend. This is Moe's friend. Uh, who was fully identified in the APD report and referred to by the pseudonym Jane. So Jane wanted to remain anonymous because she's scared of Armstrong. So we have anonymous tips coming in. There, This is part of her arrest affidavit. Can you imagine if Koberger was sitting on trial based on anonymous tips? Wow. I mean, this is crazy considering that Colin Strickland left the state. Jane provided information on the condition she would remain anonymous to prevent being targeted by Armstrong. Jane advised Wilson and Strickland have had multiple romantic relationships together and described it as an on-again, off-again relationship. Jane stated Mo Wilson and Colin Strickland's romantic relationship started during Wilson's first trip to Austin in the fall of 2021, which matches up with the breakup in October. Jane advised Armstrong discovered Wilson's phone number and contacted Wilson several times, causing Wilson to block Armstrong's phone number. Jane stated Wilson told her within the past two months, Armstrong began following Wilson on Instagram. Jane advised the last time Armstrong called Wilson She told Wilson she was with Strickland and Wilson needed to stay away from him. She probably should have stayed away from him. Just saying. Not victimizing the victim. But do people go off the chain with jealousy? And if you have a woman calling you that is living with the man you're you're screwing around with, you might want to call it off. On May, that could have saved her life. On May 14th, 2022, an anonymous caller contacted the Austin PD to provide information regarding this incident. An anonymous caller, guys. The caller refused to be identified, but advised she was with Armstrong in January of 2022. So they're going off an anonymous caller who refused to tell the police who she was. The caller advised Armstrong had just discovered Colin was having a a romantic relationship with Wilson, even though Armstrong and Strickland were still dating. The caller advised Armstrong became furious and was shaking in anger. Armstrong told the caller that Armstrong was so angry that Armstrong wanted to kill Wilson. Armstrong then proceeded to tell the caller Armstrong had either recently purchased a firearm or was going to. An initial search of Wilson's phone showed text messages Regarding an event, Wilson saw Strickland and Armstrong. An initial search of Mo Wilson's phone showed text messages regarding an event Mo Wilson saw Colin and Caitlin. Ah, okay, so Mo. That answers the question. I think he definitely was playing both sides. Um, because you're going to hear right now text messages between Mo and Strickland where she's like, um, you know, you're with her. Saw them together. So then Mo sent Colin this f- fucking triangle. The Okay, so Mo sent Colin this text and said, hey, so I would like to talk to you at some point. I had originally texted you on Friday but it appears my texts aren't going through again. So she was probably blocked. This weekend was strange for me. I just want to know what's going on. If you want to be friends, seems to be the case, then that's cool. But I'd like to talk about it because honestly, my mind has been going in circles and I don't know what to think. Colin replied the, fo- the following the next day. Hey, Mo, I feel very shitty for putting you in a position where you don't feel comfortable. 
Caitlin came along the go to Caitlin came along to go to a meeting about the Sprinters Spartan Hotel project. In hindsight, this was not a good idea. Based off the conversation, Mo Wilson appeared under the impression she was still in a romantic relationship with Strickland, even though he was currently dating Armstrong. During Strickland's interview, he advised he purchased a firearm for Armstrong around this time. Based off the corroborating information discovered throughout the investigation, it would be reasonable to believe the um, anonymous caller is a credible witness. Hold up. During Strickland's interview, he advised he purchased a firearm for Armstrong around this time. Based off the corroborating information discovered through the investigation, it would be reasonable to believe the anonymous caller is a credible witness. On May 15th, Detective Spittler was canvassing the neighborhood where the murder occurred in an attempt to locate video surveillance. While searching, he was approached by David Harris. Harris is the property owner where Cash resides and rents the apartment above his detached garage to Cash. Harris advised on May 11th between 8.30 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. He walked into his garage and partially raised the garage door. Harris advised after doing so, he heard what he described as someone running down the stairs that led to Cash's front door. Harris advised he believed he observed a bicycle travel southbound through the alleyway from Cash's apartment. But he didn't see a person. He didn't see who was on that vehicle. Throughout this investigation, detectives assigned to the APD Homicide Unit, APD Aggravated Assault Unit, and officers assigned to the APD TAC Intel Unit have collected various surveillance footage, corroborating statements made by Strickland and showing Armstrong's vehicle in the area of the murder. The following is a collaboration of the video timeline. So then they go through 8.16. They're in the park. They're in the parking lot of the pool burger. 8.26, Armstrong's vehicle drive, cool drives burger. northbound on Maple, then turns on East 18th. Then Strickland drives through the alleyway Lion on his motorcycle at 8.35. 8.36, the door is unlocked. 8.37, Armstrong's vehicle appears to stop next to Cash's residence. And then at 8.48, Strickland drives southbound um, in the 4900 block of SI-35 southbound frontage road, approximately eight miles from Cash's residence. On May 17th, the Sig Sauer 9mm belonging to Armstrong, which was recovered from Strickland's residence, was test fired using laboratory ammunition. The fired test cartridge shell case from the Sig Sauer, Sawyer, whatever, was entered into the National Integrated Ballistic Information Network. The fired test cartridge case was compared microscopically to the shell cases located next to the body. Uh, NIBIN investigative lead was developed through the correlation review of ballistic evidence. The potential that the same firearm was involved is significant. Colin Strickland's statements have been corroborated through video surveillance and physical evidence. Strickland has cooperated with the investigation and voluntarily provided statements to homicide detectives. Armstrong is the only person who resides with Strickland at the residence and has access to the Sig Sawyer P365. Video surveillance shows Strickland leaving the area after dropping off Wilson and shows Armstrong's vehicle arriving at Cassius' residence. Armstrong has made prior statements expressing a desire to kill Wilson. Strickland advised Detective Spittler he has not spoken with Armstrong since May 13th. Per anonymous tips reported to the APD homicide unit, Armstrong has deleted her social media accounts and has not been seen or heard from since the time, this time either. Detective Spittler was able to view Armstrong's Instagram account the day after the murder, May 12th, but after searching through open source records, found it has now been deleted. Well, they can subpoena those. Sworn and subscribed before me, we got Patrick McAnellis and Richard Spittler III. That is our first doc. Ooh, that was a mouthful. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of you are, are saying...
I'd be more pissed with my boyfriend. And a lot of women get really mad at the guys or at the women. I mean, they take it out on the women. But I think that this guy is partially responsible for this outcome. I mean, what do you guys think? Oh, I know he's gross. He really isn't cute at all. But I think it was the whole status thing <clears throat> that probably, and, you know, having things in common with Mo that, and what a pretty girl. I mean, these, both of these women are gorgeous. Hey, Poetic. Both of these women are absolutely gorgeous, in my opinion. All right, let's move on. So that is the official, the first um, affidavit. Now, the second thing we're going to see here. Is it one Jennifer or two Jennifer? <laughs> Give me two Jennifers, please. Oh, we had Callahan Walsh, of all people, <laughs> uh, weighing in on... Oh, one of my favorite people. The manhunt for Caitlin. That is the oldest son of John Walsh. Yeah, he has no respect for either women. And why did he buy her a gun? Right. Why did they each get a gun? What is the story behind that? I mean, that girl has got some killer ass hair. Right in that picture. I love it. She really does. So a little brief. All right, let me go through this really quick. Just a little brief timeline. Go back to October of 2021. That is when Colin met Mo. And he had already been in a long-term relationship with Caitlin. And he says that they were taking a break when he met her. I call bullshit. Wilson then returned to her home in San Francisco a month later and her and Strickland remained friendly and they occasionally saw each other at cycling events. This is all according to Colin, right? Life according to Colin, the cheater liar. <laughs> Strickland purchased two firearms between December 21 and January 2022. And then in 2022, according to an anonymous tipster who won't give their name, um, Armstrong found out about the fling and was shaking with anger. I feel like this girl's being set up. And then Mo traveled to Austin for Unbound, a gravel bike event. And then on May 11th was when she got picked up. Mo got picked up on the motorcycle by Colin. And then right after she's dropped off, one minute after she's dropped off is when the Jeep Grand Cherokee drives by. Being set up and you had no way out, I'd leave town too. <laughs> he knew that she knew and he knew she was a ticking time bomb. That's just my opinion. I still think that, by the way. Because if you were being set up and you had no way out, I'd leave town too. Shit. I'm just throwing a scenario out there. If I was being set up like this and I had fucking Callahan Walsh on Fox <laughs> on and Friends ass. looking for my ass, you can guarantee it. And I would have gone to the place she went. The place she went was beautiful. Um, They're saying they checked... Every camera, yeah. Wait till you see where she was staying. This ain't no joke. This ain't no joke. All right, let's listen to Callahan, shall we? Let's listen to Callie. I don't know, Meg. After this short ad. So Fox and Friends. I guess you ask if I would change my appearance. I guess if I made it all the way to Costa Rica and I was like, got a job as a yoga instructor and I thought okay I can actually live my life here maybe oh my god that was pre-Timu days by the way 
All right, Callahan, what do you think? Angle turns You're deadly. the professional. It's been more than a month since professional cyclist Maura Wilson was found dead in Austin, Texas after meeting with the murder suspect's boyfriend. Police now say 34-year-old Caitlin Armstrong is still on the run and could be using her sister's name traveling across the country. Our next guest says it's just a matter of time before she's caught. Joining us now is the son of John Walsh and in pursuit of John Walsh, Walsh co-host Callahan Walsh. Good morning, Callahan. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Me. Thanks for coming on. Tell us what happened, what you think happened, what police think Roberta. happened. Roberta. Well, in, in this case, uh, Caitlin Armstrong, whose boyfriend was, was Colin Strickland at the time, uh, they were separated for, for a bit, and Colin started seeing another woman, Mariah Wilson. Like, why um, are we all Armstrong believing and, and this Strickland creep? Strickland wound up getting back together. See, he's just reiterating Colin's story. F, F that. Mm -hmm. How do we know that's the truth? Because they say so. <laughs> I don't like Colin Strickland. No, I don't think the sister got arrested. Nancy Grace, man. Woo, she looking, she looking old. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Nancy. My apologies. I think you've got a Ouija board <laughs> down your pants. You're going to pull that out. I'm still, I'm so skeptical on how she even got caught, you guys. Why are people such idiots? Okay, let's move on to the next. Let's read about Colin, shall we? Here are five fast facts you need to know about this ugly fucker. <laughs> He's not even cute. <laughs> oh, I know Callahan. I'm not a fan of Callahan either. I'm with you. I'm with you guys. Okay, let's read through this real quick. Strickland is fast becoming one of the leading lights of gravel racing. I think he deserves some major gravel rash. What do you think? Kind of looks like Brian Laundry in this picture. Blit. Sponsored by Red Bull. So he thinks he is big, big hot stuff. Mm -hmm. Colin Strickland took a long and uncommon route to becoming a professional cyclist, launching his pro career in his late 20s. Now at the height of his ability, he's rewritten the record books and criterium racing and is a dominant force in the fast growing discipline of gravel. This is his bio. I cannot. You guys think he looks like Brian too? And look how cool he is. Listen, I am halfway through the Rafa Festive 500 KM Challenge. I've been pushing hard and the body is starting to fatigue, but I know I'll need the fitness when American gravel racing heats up for 2022. Plus, it's 80 degrees in Austin right now, which is creepy. But time to make hay. Venga, venga, venga. Whatever that means. <laughs> and this is Mo Wilson, the victim. Let me replay that part again. This is straight from Colin's mouth, guys. Nut huggers. No, Red Bull kept him. <laughs> You guys think he looks like Brian, too? And look how cool he is. <laughs> Listen, I am halfway through the Rafa Festive 500 KM Challenge. I've been pushing hard and the body is starting to fatigue, but I know I'll need the fitness when American gravel racing heats up for 2022. Plus, it's 80 degrees in Austin right now, which is creepy, but time to make hay. Venga, venga, venga. Whatever that means. <laughs> And this is Mo Wilson, the victim. In her short time here, okay, Mariah I can't breathe. inspired many, lived fully, and loved fiercely. They always say that when someone dies. I'm not saying she wasn't a good person, but it's always the same rhetoric. Please don't say that when I die. When I die, be honest. Be like, she was moody, she was bitchy sometimes. She never knew how to unmute. I mean, be honest. 
when I die. Don't make me a dog-faced lion pony soldier. And let's take a look now at, and this is what another thing I found weird. Check this out. We're going to look, we're going to go to some Google Maps. We're going to Jay Hughes it <laughs> with the Google Maps. <laughs> bingo, bingo, bingo. All right, let's go down on Maple Ave. So this appears to be the place and they have it blurred out on Google. I don't know why. What's Vanga Vanga Vanga? <laughs> <laughs> Heather. Jury pool. Hey Carrie, love you too, girl. the lawyers so they've got it blurred out for whatever reason but let's take a little gander <laughs> laura w says i want mine to say she talks shit to the end cryptic 101 he has always blinked in family pictures <laughs> i love it so real and so true that's how i want my old bit to read real and true but here is the neighborhood, okay? So it's kind of sketch a little bit, if I'm being honest. Like, these are cool, these places. And I don't know if this is where... Oh, you can see it now. It must have been either this place or this place. I think it's the older place. Look how sketchy this is. This is from this April of 2022. Is. This is one month before the murder. But Banga sounds funny. <laughs> Funnier. Oh, the dude's a dork. So apparently they got the surveillance. I'm going to show you guys the um, alleyway that this Colin supposedly drove through. Wait, we have to go back. Hey, Paul Clank. Good morning. I mean, it just doesn't look like a, a nice area to me. How do they know it wasn't a robbery, you know? It looks a little sketchy. I mean, look at this To be honest. It could have been anybody. She could have opened that door to anybody. But what do I know? I don't know downtown Austin. But here's the alleyway. Look, it puts us right in the alleyway here. So he went down this alley after he <sighs> See, it screws up, off. though. To 18th, though. This is the road he came out of the alley. And then apparently went on his way. But weird. So she must have been tailing them if she did this. She must have been tailing them. But how many black Jeep Grand Cherokees, and my question is, did they get the license plate number on the surveillance? That's what I'm wondering. And there's that darn house blocked out again. Why? This trial starts tomorrow, guys. Guys, Opening I don't statements. know. I mean, could this have been a robbery gone bad? Could that Caitlin have been driving by just stalking? And was there at the wrong time? I mean, is it possible? Well, this might be the alleyway, too. I wonder I what her defense which will alleyway be. it is. There's a few alleys. Oh, it's probably this one. Oh. <gasps> Wait, hold on. Oh, darn it. See, it doesn't let me get in there. But anyways, you get the gist of it. Let me come back and see what in the heck you guys are saying. Oh, I wasn't even on camera. Do you, guys you can go on to Google and block it out. 
Hang on. Bye, April. Be s- All right, let me pause it for a second. This is me live, live in the background. Um, do you guys like that little circle camera versus the square? Just wondering. This is an older stream, so we're getting into more info. We're just walking through um, what happened. And this is an old stream of mine from one year ago. The investigation shows someone shot Wilson inside the home on Maple Avenue. Detective ha- detectives have identified a person of interest. There is no reason to suspect any threats to the public, and the shooting does not appear to be a random act. The cause of death was homicide. But listen, her bicycle was stolen and found in bamboo. But my question is... How did she get in? Okay, hear me out. Her friend that Cash, Caitlin Cash said, oh, hey, she has a unique code. She, you know, no one else can get in. Um, She had the door unlocking for her to leave to go swimming with Colin. And then she had the door unlocking to come home. One minute after she unlocked the door, Caitlin drove by. So when did someone go inside? Because they didn't say there was a notification on the phone of someone entering the house after Mo did. Mo went in at 836 or whatever. Caitlin Armstrong's Jeep drives by at 837. How did she get inside the house? It doesn't make sense. This Caitlin Cash would have had another another um, thing, another notification, no? That's what doesn't make sense to me. There would have been another notification. I'm confused at that. Caitlin Cash said Wilson was her friend and she was visiting from San Francisco. She picked Wilson up at the airport on May 10th. Strickland, who grew up on a farm in Texas, went swimming with Wilson and to a burger bar shortly before the murder. So Colin grew up on a farm outside of Austin, Texas. And he is quoted as saying, the first time I got on a bike, there was no tarmac in sight. It was two miles on gravel gravel to the highway. I really don't want to read his bio. She left around 5.30 and then... This Caitlin Cash left at 530 and returned home to find her on the bathroom floor covered in blood. Cash said Colin Strickland was the man Wilson was going to swim with. Cash. okay, here we go. Cash explained she has an electronic lock on her door that is unlocked by using a unique code. She receives a notification on her phone when the door has been unlocked. He had provided she had provided Wilson with the code and received a notification at 5.55 that Wilson locked the door to go swimming. She received a notification at 8.36 to unlock the door, indicating she returned. And then they see the dark SUV drive by at 8.37. How the fuck did she get in? Where's the notification for that? Are you guys confused? I'll let me explain a little bit here. So what they're saying is that the person that Mariah Mo Wilson was staying with, she was here from in Austin from San Francisco. She unlocked the door after she went swimming with Colin at the pool burger. Right? So you have Mo unlocking the door at 8:30 8:36. But then you have 
Caitlin's vehicle drive by one minute later. So what time did she go inside? Do you get what I'm saying where it's confusing? But why would Mo leave the door unlocked? Like, that doesn't even make sense. Like, those kind of doors automatically lock unless, yeah, like, if you leave it cracked open. But why would she leave it cracked open? She was just dropped off by Colin. What would be the reason to leave it cracked open? Would that girl get a notification if it was unlocked from the, or open from the inside? I don't know. He had provided, she had provided Wilson with the code and received a notification at 5.55 that Wilson locked the door to go swimming. She received a notification at 8.36 to unlock the door, indicating she returned. And then they see the dark SUV drive by at 8.37. How the fuck did she get in? Where's the notification for that? That's where they lose me completely. I wonder how they're going to explain this in court. No, she hasn't said anything. She hasn't denied it and she hasn't admitted it. Yeah, he sounds very punchable. <laughs> What time was she found? Um, let's see. Does it say when the friend got home? It doesn't. And what a liar. Strickland told police that he dated Wilson for only one to two weeks last fall. He's a liar. Okay, so he says that he got home at 843, so they lived close. Mm. What the fuck? Hold on, you guys. On the day of the murder, he picked up Wilson on his motorcycle at Cash's residence, and they went to the city of Austin Deep Eddie Pool. After swimming, they walked to Pool Burger. After they ate, he drove Wilson back to Cash's residence. He did not go inside. He stopped his motorcycle and texted Armstrong at 8.36, writing, hey, are you out? He arrived home at 8.43 and sent Armstrong another text. At 9.21, he sent her yet another text. What, Summer? Oh, God, he released a statement? That's Caitlin and her sister. He said, sister. there was no way, there is no way to adequately express the regret and torture I feel about my proximity to this horrible crime. I am sorry, and I simply cannot make sense of this unfathomable tragedy. He said he cooperated fully with investigators and said he had a brief week-long rela relationship with Wilson, from late October to early November 2021. At the time, they had both decided to end relationships. But after she returned home in California, he and Armstrong reconciled. Huh. What a nice guy. So we know he's lying because Mo Wilson's texts between her and Colin, she was confused. She's like, she saw him and Caitlin at a race together. So she texted Colin. She's like, I'm a little confused about today. If you just want to be friends, that's fine. But, you know, she basically was like, explain to me what is going on and where we stand. But then he's telling investigators it was only a week or two. Come on. He said he often saw Mo at cycling events and in public settings including competitions. After that point, he said, they had a platonic and professional relationship only and added it was not my intention to pursue a long and auxiliary, auxiliary romantic relationship that would mislead anyone. Mariah and I were both leaders in this lonely niche of sport of cycling 
and I admired her greatly and considered her a close friend. I am deeply grieving her loss. What a dick. Mm. Armstrong was interviewed by police before she disappeared. And we went over that. She didn't say shit. She's nodded her head. And then we have the anonymous tipster. None of this is like strong, hard evidence. Okay. Going forward. All right, so she was on the run for 43 days, Caitlin was. Let's take a look at what we have here at the Daily Mail. Fugitive teacher, yoga teacher, Caitlin Armstrong was trying to set up a life for herself in Costa Rica when she was arrested for the murder of her love rival, attending yoga classes and staying in a hostel in an effort to stretch out her savings. Armstrong, 34, was arrested in Costa Rica on June 30th after 43 days on the run. U.S. Marshals failed to stop Armstrong from fleeing the state, traveling first to New York and then on to Costa Rica using a fake passport. She was finally arrested by the authorities in Costa Rica after local police <coughs> excuse me, ran a background check on a name she gave them during a stop in the town and found no record of her entering the country. She then confessed that her real name was Armstrong, which led them to the high-priority arrest warrant. U.S. Marshals say they received dozens of tips, which led them to track Armstrong down in Costa Rica. Why am I not believing this shit? She thought it was some kind of safe haven for her. U.S. Marshal Brandon Fila said in an appearance on Good Morning America... We knew she had some type of money. She had a check for $12,200. That would be valuable to fund her disappearance. She shortened her hair, dyed it brown, dark brown. She was trying to set up another type of lifestyle. When she was arrested, Armstrong had a Band-Aid on her nose, which police say was covering an injury she sustained while surfing. Cycling news website Velo News, however, cites anonymous sources who said she underwent plastic surgery. Okay, so there's more conflicting from authorities versus what we're hearing. They're saying that she had a Band-Aid on her nose because she hurt herself surfing. But we clearly see that her entire face looks different. Like, even more than her nose, in my opinion, looks different now. And this is a video of her supposedly... We never see her face, dude. This is the most bizarre shit. Check this out. Miss Robin, thank you for your super chat. Thank you for creating a fun chat environment while we discuss cases. Well, it wouldn't be a fun chat environment without you guys. So thank you for being here, Robin, and everybody else. Second shout out to Miss Robin today. She's very, very thin. I just don't think that the little town in Costa Rica that she was freaking living in would just randomly be like, hey, let me check you. <laughs> we're going to do Google and we're going to go families need a fighter who where she for was. Us, a former prosecutor. We need to go on Google because I'm going to show you. She looks like Carrot Top. She's got money to buy Hurley shirts. <laughs> This is a picture of Santa Teresa Beach, Santa a remote Teresa. Costa Rican town. Santa Teresa. And they want you to believe that in this town, right here, this town right here, this primitive Costa Rican village, <laughs> that she was stopped and asked who she was to check if she had come into the country legally. Why? I've been to Costa Rica. I've been in these little towns, walking around, going to the little bars. And 
I never saw any police even walking about. So I'm curious to find out more about that story. If we'll even find out, because honestly, going through the airport in um, Costa Rica was kind of scary. They carry rifles and they don't speak English. They speak Spanish. And it's just it was very intimidating. What are you doing? <laughs> Seventeen oh eight over one million on Zillow. You're kidding me, Sonny. It's legal because they capture the video from public streets. You won't be able to force Google to remove the images, but you can ask your house be blurred. Oh. All right, let's fast forward to Costa Rica. And that is her at LaGuardia Airport in New York. This is her taking off. And this is video, I guess, of her fleeing from New York to Austin. <laughs> she flew from New York to Austin, Austin Six to Costa Rica, I believe. Or she may have had, like, another f connecting flight. I think I have too many windows open. <laughs> Florida fan house oh here's the costa rica footage this is where she it was actually staying. looks really fun this is where she was living guys and i feel like she would have blended right in so why was she stopped why was she questioned <laughs> you guys costa rica is so beautiful so beautiful That's the nightlife. This is, I mean, this is literally where you would sleep. A hostel is where you stay. Um, it's like a hotel kind of, but you share bathrooms and you might be in like the same room as people. Like you might sleep in the same room. They might have bunk beds. And it's very. Um, the best coffee. Absolutely. It's very reasonable. They're not you know, expensive because you're sharing space. There's a monkey and you can hear the monkeys in Costa Rica in the morning times. I mean, these people look like they're having a blast and I feel like Caitlin Armstrong would have blended right the hell in. Don't you? She would have looked like any other tourist in Costa Rica. There's more monkeys. But yeah, this is the quarters. Like you would sleep in here. I think it's all shared. And then you have like shared bathrooms. So it's not for everybody, but like somewhere like this, look at this. It's absolutely gorgeous. It says here, your belongings are not safe from monkeys or bandits if they're not locked in the locker. And they have hammocks out there. And I just think it looks really cool. I would totally go here. There's the bunks. That might be the end of the photos. So let's see here. Let's get their address. I mean, this place has great reviews as well. Here, we'll just go over here. All right, let's go to the treehouse. Look at that. Look where that place is located. 16 bucks a night, people.
Now, if I was being, if I was being, um, if I was wanted, <laughs> this is where I'd want to go. Hey, Hope. Let's zoom in, shall we? And you can see here, there's, um, this, this is all surrounded by, um, volcanoes as well. It's really freaking cool. And yes, it's Nicaragua. Nicaragua is like right there. Let's see if I can. Is Myron in the house? Myron's from Nicaragua. I can't even go down there. Oh, wait. <gasps> Where am I on the zip line? Oh my God, you guys, look. We can walk across the freaking bridge thing. Oh, no, we can't. This is from 2016. Look, there's the tree house. I say we all go there. I mean, 16 bucks a night, $18 with taxes. Forget about it. Four guests, $37 a night with taxes. Let's do it. Treehouse Nicker. Oh, here we go. This is their website. Welcome to the Treehouse. Workshops and yoga. Look. We run a free daily yoga session. Check at the bar for the time schedule. Sweet. Also feel free to use our yoga deck anytime. Tips for our teacher, always welcome. You can expect anything from chocolate making, Spanish lessons, well-being, cooking, arts and crafts, etc. Classes vary depending on our volunteer skill set. Do you think that Caitlin would have just fit right in here? Why would anyone question it? Meals. Let's see what the meals are like. Ooh, we employ local chefs who offer a range of home cooked meals with focus on keeping things fresh. Best food I ever ate. Best fruit in Costa Rica by far. Thank you so much, Miss Robin. She says, thank you. It's like it's like a flashback. Thank you for creating a fun chat environment while watching the other fun chat environment. It's like the movie Inception. It is. You got two Jennifers this morning. Roto causing pop Thank you for being Roto. here, everybody. Roto. We are just, um, if you've missed the update and the affidavit, you can rewind. If you're just joining, we are going through where Caitlin was staying in Costa Rica. Oh, the mangoes and the papayas. Oh, it's amazing. Every family meal offers something different with a vegetarian option always on offer. We can also provide a vegan option if you let us know at the bar in advance. Meal prices, breakfast, four bucks, lunch, five bucks, dinner, six bucks. Forget about it. And this in the snacks are toasties, choco, banana bread, chips, noodles, and smoothies. Sign me up, man. Guys, forget about it. I want to fucking live here too. Are you kidding me? Look at that food. Look at that fruit. Look at that fruit. Guys. 37 bucks a night for a party of four. <laughs> Let's go. I'm, I'm six I, buck dinner. I need three peeps. Five buck breakfast. Forget about it. <laughs> Stay with us. I want a hammock booking. The treehouse is located in a natural jungle environment, 150 meters uphill, which requires some hiking. You agree to enter at your own risk. We recommend some basic level of fitness to stay with us. We are not too suitcase friendly, but come best come with a backpack. Perfect. Look, the private treehouse, 40 to $45 for two people. Oh my goodness. Let's go. The private room, 20 to $28 a night per person or for two it. people. Forget about it. It's an you can just straight up. Oh, my God. You can just straight up like rent a hammock. Those are for sleeping. Six to ten bucks a night. Sleep in a freaking hammock in Costa Rica. Dorm beds, ten to twelve dollars per person. 
If you do not arrive before seven, your beds may be given away. Due to our unique structure and location, the treehouse is not suitable for children. So no kids, even better. If you have medical problems, we advise to stay elsewhere. Yeah, bring your own. Bring your own, Jack. It is our job to ensure good vibes at all times. So we have a few hostile rules. No outside alcohol, no drugs, and don't be a dickhead. Oh, sorry, Mike. Well, Colin would not be allowed there. Colin, Colin was not welcome. I could live there forever, too. <laughs> Everybody wants to go. I would, too, Miss Robin. I totally would. Miss <laughs> Robin? All right, Again? let's move forward. Interesting stuff, though, no? No drugs, no I alcohol. still want to know where the notification was on Caitlin Cash's phone of someone entering the house Caitlin to kill her Cash friend. take the stand? What if Caitlin Cash did it? Caitlin Cash found her ass. Oh I'm not God. saying she did, but shoot. I mean, oh my God. the heck? Why are you confused, Jammer? Because there's two of me. It's Papa. The, oh, listen to this one. Here's more about the vehicle. The U.S. Marshals uh, Lone Star Fugitive Task Force also located Armstrong's black Jeep Cherokee last week and learned that she sold it <coughs> May 13th to a CarMax dealership in South Austin for $12,200. She was provided a check from the dealership a day after being questioned by Austin authorities. Armstrong's black Jeep Grand Cherokee is believed to be the same one that was seen on security camera. And I have that video. Let's watch it. Let's watch it. This is ring camera of her car. Allegedly. I'm back here silent and off camera. And the old live is me on. Oh, oh sorry. Whoa. That was really friggin' loud. Wake up. Oh, whoops. Oh, Mike, that's awful. That happened. That's it? That's all they have? Please tell me they have more than that. Look at my nails. Get my nails a year ago. This is July of 2022, guys. J is for Justice Studio 2022. <laughs> but Mike, that happened to my sister-in-law. Okay, this in says China. Armstrong was questioned about her vehicle being in the area as pictured on the ring camera. However, she would not confirm or deny being in the area of the murder and quickly <laughs> terminated the interview. She was then mistakenly released from custody on the misdemeanor warrant because her date of birth in the department's report management system did not match the date of the birth of birth on the warrant. What? What you are I'm sorry, you guys. The, the participants are the not dogs barking. <laughs> Hang on. I have someone here working, so all right, they're gone. <laughs> but um, yeah, what is that about? Let me read that again. Let me read that one more time. She was then mistakenly released from custody on the misdemeanor warrant because her date of birth in the department's report management system did not match the date of birth on the warrant, Spitler added. He says, quote, Armstrong was mistakenly released from custody on the misdemeanor warrant because her date of birth in our report management system did not match the date of birth on the warrant. And this was in a press conference on May 25th. I think Colin Strickland's a freaking liar. So, oh, look. Oh, so cute. 
I don't like any of this, you guys. And pulley. Family I speak agree. about romantic relationship of murdered cyclist Mariah Wilson. I thought they said she wasn't having a relationship with anybody. Yeah, see, all his lies Weird. get exposed. Her family's like, yeah, she was in a relationship. But some dude she used to date traveled to Austin as well. How do we know? Oh, listen. yeah, there's that video I wanted to. Okay, so listen. Mariah's ex came to Austin. Look at my Amica face. Seriously, Amica. So Mariah Wilson's ex also came to Austin, but we haven't gotten any information about that. So what if Mariah's ex saw her with Colin and did this? It, there's just so many weird things like hanging out there. That's why I'm so anxious for this trial. Right now we have jury selection going on tomorrow's opening statements. I am here to help you learn. Shut up, Amica. To show you guys. Let me see what I've got open here. Let's... Close some of this stuff out. She sold her car, and that's how she got the $12,000, by the way. Okay. Thank you, Carlin, for explaining. What is going on? Ah, forget <laughs> Forget it. Oh, we got Fox News Digital, and we had no idea how awesome they were. They're so um, athletic, but I feel like she had boobs. I'm waiting for a picture of her. Like she might have a sports bra on, huh? I just don't feel like she was. No, it looks tight. It doesn't look big at all. Guys, it looks like it's a form-fitting, like, athletic thing. And if she lost weight, you're right. That's the first thing to go is the boobs. Just so bizarre. A mask and ne not showing the face. It's like, when do we respect these people's privacy like this? You just literally can't see her like i'm waiting for the guy from mask like to see him that's what she reminds me of like in this <laughs> video the guy from the movie in that movie mask oh my god anyway okay so there's that that's the video of her getting brought back i have a final video for you guys um let me make sure that i have covered it all Covered the tree house, which is amazing. We're all going to go there on vacation. And I th think we might be up to date. Okay. But yeah, I this is definitely in Costa Rica. Um, I think we are up to date in this one. What's this that I find? She didn't do what most soap operas would have had her do. Oh, this is Colin's um, business. He's known Strickland for 17 and Armstrong for one year. He told Daily Mail he never would have suspected Armstrong of being capable of such a crime and that she had never raised any red flags and had always been a nice person. David worked with both Strickland and Armstrong at Wheelhouse Mobile, a company that restores vintage trailers. After it happened, she didn't do what most soap operas would have had her do. What? What? After it happened, she didn't do what most soap operas would have had her do, which is go back home and kill the one thing you can't have, Strickland. What do you mean can't have? She was living with him. It's dark, David said. We think we live in a world where we can see crazy on people's faces. Show up at a gas station and there's a guy there on drugs and you think, 
that face has crazy written on it. I'm going to go to the next gas station. What the fuck? David. David, David, David. (laughs) So who the fuck is David? (laughs) David. This shit's weird, man. I'm telling you. None of this makes sense. Um, Caitlin Armstrong went to Stevenson. These are her photos right here from the yearbook and track and all that stuff. And then there's also a picture of her um, home in Livonia that she lived in, in Livonia, Michigan. Yeah, that is really strange, you guys. Learning more tonight about the search for an Austin woman who's accused of murdering a professional cyclist. U.S. Marshals are looking for Caitlin Armstrong. She's accused of killing Anna Mariah Wilson nearly two weeks ago here in Austin. Police say the victim had a brief relationship with the suspect's boyfriend last year. And investigators say that made Armstrong angry. And now there's new information that could help find her. KVU's Matt Fernandez is live in East Austin with surveillance video from the night of the murder. Hi, Matt. Hi, Matt. Hey, Matt. What's up? Hello. Yeah, U.S. Marshals are trying to find a black Jeep Grand Cherokee that was seen leaving this area where we'll... Okay, so this is the video I saw, and I thought, where in the hell did they live? Because I don't know where he's being forced to stand. Why isn't it playing? Come on. Caitlin Marie Armstrong as well. Now, Anna Maria Wilson was well known in the cycling community. She was staying with a friend in the Austin area ahead of a race in Hico. Wilson was found unconscious in an East Austin home on May 11th. Now investigators say suspect wanted in the connection of her murder is Caitlin Marie Armstrong. U.S. Marshals say she was a yoga teacher and a realtor. Police uncovered information that Wilson had previously a relationship with a man whom Armstrong was involved with, according to authorities. Now, according to an affidavit, in this case, Wilson and Armstrong's boyfriend went swimming at Deep Eddy Pool the day she was killed. They then went to eat and they dropped her off at a house on Maple Avenue where Wilson was staying. We have surveillance video that... I feel like she was seeing if he was there, maybe an SUV leaving where Wilson was staying. Authorities are now trying to find that vehicle. It's a black Jeep Grand Cherokee and U.S. Marshals say they got about... Wait, so it's light here. It's daytime, but then the other thing is dark. So how long did this... Ooh, good question. Look at... Strickland said that um, Caitlin got home around 9, like 40 or something like that. So what, okay, if she was driving by, we need to know, Jams, at 8.36 in May in Texas, is it dark at 8.36 p.m.? Because this is what they're saying. She drove by at 8.36. But then they show also some surveillance at, in the dark. It would have been dark. Where Wilson was staying. We have surveillance video that shows an SUV leaving where Wilson was staying. Authorities are now trying to find that vehicle. It's a black Jeep Grand Cherokee. And U.S. Marshals say they got about 30 tips, but really need the public's help in finding Armstrong. We always take our investigations and we start here locally. Uh, We're going based on the facts. Oh, shut up. (laughs) Okay, so what do you guys think about this? I think it is very weird. I don't think it's cut and dry. Aussie true crime. Oh, I love the Aussie. Oh, my God. What's this? Um, Hearings with Google. Have you guys ever watched any of these? Okay, that was my going out video. Okay, let's come back to real life for a hot minute here because that is my year ago recap. Look how low I am. This is a weird angle. Very, very strange. But if you guys have any questions, let me check and see if you put any in there. Um, No questions. I must have explained it well. And thank you, Miss Robin, 
Carlin and Allison. Thank you for your super chat, Allison. Thank you so much, guys, for being here. Um, So just to let you guys know, tomorrow is opening statements. And I called the court and they were like, it's first come, first serve um, for cameras in the courtroom. So obviously we aren't there to be the first come. And what are we going to do? Set up our phones? I mean, it doesn't, I don't even understand that. But at any rate, she said the judge allowed cameras in the courtroom for opening, closing, and the verdict. And KVUE Austin is going to be in the courtroom. So I'm assuming they'll probably have cameras for the camera section that's allowed, right? For the the sections that are allowed to have cameras. I'm assuming. I'm not sure. But KVUE is going to be in the courtroom regardless. So we can definitely get updates from them. So either way, I'm going to be either making video to update you guys, um, something like that. So just make sure you're subscribed because this is kind of up in the air right now. So we're going to have to just play it by ear. But it's going to be very interesting because we have like Ethan Crumbly's parents who got him this gun, you know, and they are held responsible. We're seeing it a lot more that people are being held responsible for providing firearms, even though Ethan Crumbly was a little kid um, or a kid. But still, you know, it it. it all the time frame is just so coincidental. It's very strange. Uh, Meg P wants to know if I have the warrant document from Caitlin. I do. And I will go ahead and put that in the Facebook group for you guys if that works. Jammers wants to be there for the verdict. That would be awesome if you could be. So this is being held in the auxiliary court in Austin. And it'll be interesting to see if Colin testifies, if, um, you know, what this roommate says when she testifies. I'm sure she will. The one whose apartment it happened in. So make sure that you are subscribed. I will um, put it in the Facebook group. And Jammers was kind enough to put the links up. So go ahead and go to Facebook. Go to our group from our page. Like our like our page as well. And follow us on X. Colin. I know. Colin Strickland. Is he going to be the star witness, you think? I don't know. I know. Good old Texas. Island Thrift. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Well, thanks for joining this morning, guys. Monday Live was a full live today. We're going to roll our credits and I will see you guys in the next video. We've got a lot going on tomorrow, Halloween. Check out the live for tomorrow. I put it up for 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you can't pop in and you want to show us your costume, we're doing a costume contest. Send your Halloween pictures to the team email. The mods will put it up in the chat right now. We also have tomorrow, given the Fallout premiere, we have our special holiday or Halloween holiday edition episode two. You're not going to want to miss it. It's very witchy. It's very witchy. So um, Jay and Tato get witchy on given the fallout. And what else? Diarrhea. The What's your favorite Halloween movie? Let us know. Let us know. But yeah, let us um, see your Halloween costume. Send them. We're going to be giving away hoodies to the costume winners. J is for Justice Hoodies from the merch store. So definitely, definitely send your pictures in if you cannot make the live. I will be in costume. Potato will be in costume. Um, we're going to be on panel. If you want to come up on panel in your costume tomorrow, you can pop up. It's going to be a good time. So we're going to be chilling. Um, and we're going to be talking creepy stories of the Cecil Hotel. They're in Hollywood. Um, do I like scary movies? I do. I do, yeah. At this time of year, I do. Yay, Jammer's coming on in costume tomorrow. Awesome. I can't wait. I can't wait to see. If you guys are able to come up, 
Um, we're going to be live starting around nine at 9 p.m. Eastern, and we'll stay live to kind of work in everybody. Because I know that a lot of you are um, handling kids, grandkids, trick-or-treating, um, and you're going to be tied up, lack of a better term, you're going to be tied up until later in the, in the evening. So I thought this would work um, for everybody. Wow, Island, maybe you can call in tomorrow and tell us about it. Creepy story tomorrow. What's up, Unseen? Good to see you. Good to see you, Unseen. Good to unsee you. I just stayed in the Emily Morgan in the top three most haunted hotels in America. Oh, Diana, call in and tell us about it. Ann Pulley, can I DM pictures? Sure, you can send them on Facebook as well. Send them on Facebook. Send them to me on Discord, wherever you want to you send them. I'll get them one way or another, guys, one way or another. I can't wait to see your costumes. And the members in the Discord and Patreon are going to be your judges. So I'm not judging. The members in the Patreons are going to be the costume contest judges. So send your costume pictures. Diana, I can't wait to hear your spooky stories. Um, up in Detroit, we called this Devil's Night growing up. And I found out recently that not everybody knows what Devil's Night is. That was so bizarre to me. So put a one in chat if you know what um, Devil's Night is. Or if you ever... If you, if you ever called the day before Halloween Devil's Night. I kind of exited myself too soon. You did call it Devil's Night. Well, I know Jammers is a Michigander, but we called it Devil's Night. And then um, Detroit got a lot of, like, fires and stuff that night. So now they call it Angel's Night. Now they call it Angel's Night. And, Polly, you're a member, so you can join. Go to the Members Community tab, and the link to Discord is in there. If you have any problems, um, hit us up on Facebook, and we'll help you out. Or comment on the community post. But there's a link for all members. If you're green, you're a member. And you can come into the Discord. All right. Well, happy Devil's Night, guys. Happy Angel's Night. Um, everybody stay safe. Have fun. Enjoy your Halloween holiday. It's all in good fun. And we will see you later. Let's roll our credits. Thanks for your support, guys. Be sure to check out my other videos and playlists for more true crime content. And if that's not enough, you can join our Patreon. Don't have a tinfoil hat? It's okay. We'll make you one. It's that easy. See you guys in the next video. See you later. Bye. I don't give a I heard damn. you I don't With really like a change. care about you and your problems. I don't give a damn. You talk way too much. I have heard enough about you and your problems. I don't give a damn. Fucking fuzzy slippers and lip gloss. So there's a lot of fun toys. You wanna be, you wanna be, you wanna be with me. You wanna feel fizzle the real, but I'm feeling You're differently. You're making plans to get to friends, but don't wanna face the fact. God forbid, God forbid, what a comment. Is that one to the first? Or the first to the first? Listen, listen. No, you don't run the place. Guess yet. what? I do today. I do today. I do today. <laughs>